All right, guys, I have another knife review for you. Today I'm going to be talking about the Columbia River Knife and Tool model M16-01T. Now, there's a lot of different M16 versions, um, a whole slew of them, different sizes, different blade shapes, uh, from spear point to Tonto or Tanto. Um, this specific one is one of their medium-sized versions of the M16. Uh, it's actually probably, the, I think, the smallest version, but I would say medium because it's a medium-sized knife, in my opinion. Um, nothing small about it. Of course, it can perform many different tasks. A larger knife can. Uh, but anyway, this is the M16-01T. Now, you guys are probably more familiar with the M16-01Z, which is available at Walmart. And the reason I'm excited about showing this video is because a lot of you guys already own a version of this knife. The only difference between the two is that this is a titanium handle, handle scales on either side, as opposed to the one that's available through Walmart, which is a Zytel handle material. Okay, you have that black synthetic Zytel. Um, basically, it's the same knife. Behind, besides the uh, the handle scales, it's it's identical to the ones you guys have. Um, anyway, with the the knife, of course, you're going to get your paperwork mini catalog right here, which I love. Let me give you a quick little view of this. Uh, when you get these Columbia River Knife and Tool knives, you get these mini catalogs which uh, you can quickly scan their different models they have in their line. And as you can see from this quick little pan, if I pan across the, uh, the screen here, they have tons and tons of models. And if I flip it over, you can see all the rest. So a lot of variety. And that's one of the coolest things about Columbia River Knife and Tool is their variety and their innovation. Um, extremely, extremely innovative company. And uh, this knife, speaking of innovation, uh, this one uses the auto locks system. And of course, you also get a little reading on that. Um, and I will go into detail later in the video uh, on the auto lock system. But first, let's talk about the knife in general. Uh, let me give you some specs on this knife. This, uh, this knife open, as you see right here, is just over 7 inches, 7.125 inches. The handle is exactly 4 inches when it's closed. So you can see that in my hand. Almost disappears when I make a fist. So again, I would say about medium sized knife, not, not too small, not huge. Um, I guess you would say it's just right um, for EDC tasks. Um, and the blade is just over three inches. It's 3.125 inches. This blade is a uh, spear point design. Of course, you have the swedge on top here. It's not sharpened. It's just a single edge knife. Uh, and it's an AUS-8 stainless steel blade. I've talked a lot about AUS-8. Um, it's good and bad in a lot of respects. Uh, it's easy to work with, uh, very, very easy to sharpen. A little bit on the softer side, so it won't hold an edge as much as your, um, uh, you know, your super steels. Um, but of course, the price reflects that. It's not a super expensive knife. Uh, I'll jump right into price uh, right away here. Um, this specific version, having the titanium handles, retails for $119. However, again, you're never expected to pay full retail. Um, looking online, you can get this anywhere from $70 to $100. Um, if that's a little bit too rich for you, or if you don't feel uh, you want to spend that much on this knife, you can get the Zytel version, which again is extremely, extremely um, uh, accessible because Walmart carries it. And I know a lot of you guys watching this video are going to comment down below and say, hey, I have that version. I have the Zytel version from Walmart. Well, I think uh, everyone who's into knives had it at least one point. I know I did. Um, not everyone can uh, can buy knives online or have a lot of money to spend on knives. So, be able to pick one up at Walmart is certainly a uh, you know a good thing. <laughs> and for all you guys, all my foreign viewers who live outside the United States, I'm not sure if you guys have WalMarts uh, spread around, but in America we have them everywhere. On every corner, there's a Walmart. <laughs> And uh, all it is is a superstore. They basically carry everything from food to tools to, you know, towels. I mean, and everything in between. So, basically, but they have an outdoor section. And basically, um, these Model M16s are available through them. So, again, very accessible and very affordable. Now, again, this version here is going to cost you roughly between $70 and $100. But the same exact knife with Zytel handles is going to run you about 30 bucks, okay? Again, at Walmart, or if you get it online. Online prices are just a little bit more, between 30 and $40. So, very affordable. Um, this is a Kit Carson design. He's the uh, knife maker who originally made these uh, custom versions of these. 
This is, of course, the production version through Columbia River Knife and Tool. And what I like uh, about the titanium version here is that Kit's uh, original designs were in titanium. So I think it's cool because it's a little truer to the original custom design, which is awesome. Uh, something to consider when picking between one of the other models. Um, the titanium, of course, is very smooth. If you get the Zytel version, I believe the Zytel is a textured uh, scale. So it's going to have a, a more texture to it than this. Um, it's just really its preference. Uh, they're both extremely, extremely strong. Uh, I've never had a problem with Zytel as a handle material. Never seen it crack, break, anything like that. Titanium, same deal. You're, you're not going to have a problem with it. The cool thing about titanium is it's stronger than steel, but much lighter. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a light wielding knife. Uh, speaking of weight, this whole knife is only 2.4 ounces, which is very light. Um, again, for just over a 3-inch blade, 2.4 ounces is quite light. Uh, a lot of knives in this size range range from about 3 to three to 5 ounces. Um, so being under 3 ounces is a light knife. And you could feel it. I mean, when it's in your pocket, you kind of forget about it. So that's a, a major plus with this knife. Now this has, uh, as I mentioned before, an auto-lock system. It's a liner locking knife. And I'll grab my jeweler's loop here to, to get you in nice and close to show you this. You have a, a liner lock, but there's a little metal tab there. Now the tab prevents the liner lock from unlocking. Okay, so you have the liner which keeps the blade open. Once you, know, you open your, your blade, it's going to lock open. So it's nice and strong. But a lot of people don't like liner locks because they've had them fail on them before where if enough pressure is on the spine of the blade, it moves the liner over and out of the way, so the blade moves freely. Not a good thing. And a lot of you guys out there, if you've dealt with cheaper knives, know that uh, it can be dangerous and you can cut yourself. So um, the auto lock system, or the locks L-A-W-K uh, in S in general, what that is is basically it's a tab, okay? And the tab moves over in way of the liner. So it actually blocks... It literally blocks the liner from moving. Now, as I bring the tab up and down, you can see that here. Okay? So, this liner lock, let me get a better grip on this, the liner lock cannot move over. It is impossible to move over out of the way of that blade. So, that blade is going to be locked pretty much uh, no matter how much pressure you put on the back of the spine. And by the way, putting pressure on the back of the spine is not a common occurrence. When using a knife, the pressure is obviously in the opposite direction. But, you know, it, accidents happen, and let's say you bump into something, it's just, it's not going to lock, it's not going to fail. In other words, the lock is not going to fail. So it's an extremely strong design. Uh, I really like the lock system. Now, the locks, what it stands for is Lake and Walker Knife Safety. Okay, uh, it's a, a collaboration between Ron Lake, a custom knife maker, and Michael Walker, and they originally designed this, uh, this locking mechanism for their custom knives. The Auto Locks is Columbia River Knife and Tools version of the, the basically all they did was put a, a spring in the, the mechanism. So before, and if you saw some of my older videos, um, the 14K Summit Series by Columbia River Knife and Tool and the M18-02 that I had, it was the same locks system, but it was manual. You had to manually put it on when you open the knife. By putting a spring in here, you don't have a choice. It automatically engages which, again, I think is a good thing. Some people don't like this because they kind of forget and then they can't close the knife. Uh, it's very, very easy to do, if just with a little bit of practice. Um, there's two ways I'm going to show you how I do it, how I close the, the lock system, or auto locks in this case. And by the way, the reason you can, the way you can tell between the two is that the auto locks has a, a red dot okay, in, the, uh, in the actual tab itself. So there's two ways to do this. One way you can do it is with your pointer finger, you push that down. Then the second step is pushing the liner over. Then you release the back and you close the blade. And obviously as you're closing the blade, you move your fingers out of the way. Okay, so you don't cut yourself. Let me show you that again. That goes down, liner goes over, you let go of that, and then you close the blade. I found that a faster and more natural way for me to do this is to start using my middle finger. What I'll do is I'll kind of grip the knife like this. I'll use my middle finger to push that down, push the liner over with my thumb, and then my pointer finger is already there to close that knife. So a little bit faster, it goes like this. So you can see, you know, with a little bit of practice, um, 
it's not a nuisance at all. Again, some people complain about that because they, they feel it's hard or you have to use two hands to, to close it, which is not true. As you saw there, you can use one hand fairly quickly to close that knife. So um, Autolox is, uh, it, again, innovation from Columbia River Knife and Tool, and of course originally from uh, Ron Lake and Michael Walker. Um, it, it really turns a liner locking knife into something that you can really, really depend on. And a good liner locking knife shouldn't be an, it shouldn't be an issue already, but to have that secondary safety, it's a safety for the safety. And you really can't go wrong. There's no way it's going to fail on you. And I've never in my entire life had, and I've had a bunch of these different models, I've never had one fail on me, and I've used a couple of them very, very hard, in very tough conditions. So the Autolox is a, a major plus, big selling point for me, and again, very innovative. Um, this knife here, and we'll talk about the pocket clip. I kind of like uh, Columbia Road Knife and Tools pocket clips. They're very thin. Originally, when I first started getting their knives, I didn't like them. I thought it was kind of cheap, but uh, they're not cheap. They're, they don't, I've never had one snap on me. I've never had one bend out of shape. Because it is thin in profile, it will give easier. It's not going to be super tight. Um, I've never had one personally fall out of my pocket. Um, it rides kind of high, which is good. You only have this much of the knife showing. Of course, as you see here, it is a tip-down carry, okay, for a right-hand uh, operator, and the knife is not uh, not reversible, um, so that you know something to consider. But uh, I do like the pocket clips. It's simple and again very sleek. It, it matches the design of this knife. This knife itself is extremely sleek. It's very thin. I like the profile. Again, it carries very nicely in the pocket because it's so so thin. Um, you can see there, it's not it's not a thick knife at all. It's, uh, it's quite thin. Um, some people will like that. That's a major plus for a lot of people. And some people just like a big, bulky knife. Nothing wrong with that. Um, that's why there's so many knives out there, because a lot of people are, are picking what they like. And that's totally fine. Um, but if you like it nice and, and sleek and slender, <laughs> this is definitely one of the models you'll, you'll like. Um, there's a double thumb stud for ambidextrous use. And the thumb studs, excuse me, the thumb studs are extremely, extremely grippy. It's, uh, it's knurled which is the same uh, process you have like on flashlights, which is basically a cross cut in the metal. And of course it's on both sides. And it is extremely, extremely grippy. There's no way you get your thumb on there, it's gonna slide off on accident. Now as you see uh, throughout the video, I've been using the flipper on the back to pop that blade open, which as you saw can be extremely, extremely effective and very fast. Um, however, if you're someone who uses the thumb studs, it works just as fast. Okay, and again, um, you have a choice here, either way. Some people like using the flipper, some people like using the thumb studs. I happen to prefer thumb studs. For some reason, with this specific knife, I end up grabbing the, the flipper, just because it's easy. It's right there, it's ready to go. Um, but the thumb studs will work, work very good. Uh, again, righty or lefty. So here's a left, left hand application. Now with me, with the auto locks, lefty is a little bit more difficult. But, as you can see there, not impossible. Uh, I just have not practiced with it, that's all. But the thumb studs will knock that blade out very fast. Uh, it's very slick. Uh, as far as blade play, um, nothing up and down, extremely tight. Uh, I, when I first got the knife, there was a little bit of side to side, but I adjusted that, that uh, pivot screw, which is very conveniently just a flathead screwdriver. We'll take care of that. Um, also, as you can see there, knurled, so very grippy. Um, kind of like that. I, I like torque screws because I don't know. I'm just I guess I'm used to them. But when you have knife companies that use something simple like a flathead, uh, it makes everyone happy. You don't have to go out and get special tools to uh, to adjust your knives. So again, about not even a minute, I uh, adjusted that so it had perfect perfect tension. And it, there's no blade play at all in any direction now. And as you saw there, uh, lightning fast. Whether I use the thumb stud or if I use the flipper on the back. So, very cool. And of course, the flipper doubles as a uh, finger guard. You do have a um, a slight choil here. Uh, it's very, very slight. But again, with that guard, it's going to prevent your hand from going forward. Um, I really like the knife quite a bit. Uh, it's just uh, it's a fantastic bargain. Again, the Zytel version uh, more affordable than this, but I do prefer the upgraded titanium handle scales on this one. Um, it's just it's a fantastic knife. Really, really like it. Um, 
There's not much more I could say about it. This is a great EDC knife. I've actually been carrying this for EDC for the last, uh, I want to say about two weeks or so. And uh, I forgot how much I love this knife. Again, I had the Zytel version, um, and it was actually sold. Uh, I don't remember what I sold it for, but uh, I wasn't really missing it, but I forgot what I had. It's a very cool knife, and uh, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Again, last uh, note on this knife, the AUS-8 stainless steel, a little bit on the soft side. Um, if there's one thing uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool can do uh, to better their company, that would be to explore using some of the higher-end steels. Uh, again, the appeal of the knives is they're very cool, they're very innovative, and they're very affordable. And affordability is really a big selling point. Not everyone, or the general public anyway, doesn't expect to pay a lot of money for a decent knife. Uh, knife enthusiasts um, have a different view on that, of course. Uh, we will pay hundreds of dollars for a cool knife, <laughs> uh, but that's because of our addiction. Um, but I would say that if they were to um, put out a model like this with a uh, 154CM blade or S30V, uh, VG10, um, you know, a whole slew of different steels, uh, even if it, it raised the price quite a bit, if it was substantial, uh, I'd probably still prefer that. I really, really like this knife. I just wish that the, the blade steel was a little bit, a little bit better. Um, but again, the price will always reflect that. So, you know, if they, they put an S30V uh, blade steel on this with the titanium, that might turn this, uh, you know, $80 knife into a $150 knife. Will it be uh, a big seller if they did that? I don't know. I'm just saying I would, I would like to see them uh, just use some different steels uh, in the future if that's uh, possible. But as it is right now, it's still a fantastic knife, and I really enjoy it. So that's the, uh, the Model M16-01T. I thank you very much for watching, as always.